Pennsylvania cooking. So lately, a lot of people have been asking me about shoe fly pie. Um, and that is very quintessential PA Dutch. It's a basically a molasses pie, um, but it's a real treat. And I, I think most people that come to Pennsylvania to PA Dutch country think of, P, think of PA Dutch shoe fly pie. And I haven't made one for a while, simply because normally when I'm hungry for things shoe fly, I cheat and make shoe fly cake, which I've also done a video on already. Um, but it's a little easier, you don't have to mess with the crust or anything, but shoe fly pie is also very good. There's two kinds of shoe fly pie. There is wet bottom, which is what I'm going to make, and what I really feel is, is the truly traditional shoe fly pie. But there's also a dry bottom, which doesn't have as much of the, of the gooey bottom, but to me it's like, what fun is that? If you're going to do that, I'd make a Montgomery pie, which um, is basically a shoe fly pie on the bottom and vanilla cake on top. <laughs> it's like the best of both worlds of cake and pie. Um, and I've done a video on that as well. That's also uh, central to this region, especially down closer towards the outside of the Philly area and that PA Dutch community area. So, anyway, shoe fly pie. It's what we're making today. And I'm going to show you what goes into it and how to do it. Let's get to it. So the pie can be made kind of basically, I guess you would consider three parts. You have your crust, then you're going to have your crumb topping ingredients over here, and then you're going to have your wet ingredients over here for the molasses bottom. Um, so, you know, your crumb topping is basically uh, flour, brown sugar, butter, cinnamon, nutmeg, and baking powder. And your wet part is going to be um, unsulfured baking molasses, and I use this kind. Used to be able to get it in bulk from the Amish store, but they aren't carrying as much as they used to. Brown sugar, unsulfured baking molasses, um, a little bit of flour, vanilla, one beaten egg, baking soda, and then I have this here because we're going to need one cup of boiling water. And I must say that just about every molasses recipe I've ever used, you almost always have boiling water and baking soda. So we're going to make the crumb part. I already made my pie crust. That's already done. So that's waiting. I have my oven preheated to 375 degrees. Um, make sure that the butter is room temperature for working for the crumbs. That way it breaks up nicer. So I'm going to add my one cup of flour, my nutmeg, my cinnamon, and all the rest, the measurements for all of this is in the description below my videos. Every video I have, the recipe is in the description below the videos. Brown sugar. Make sure I get all the flour there. And the baking powder. And we're going to mix this up first. Make sure to get the lumps out if there's any. I don't sift it first because I don't want it that fine. I do sift uh, my flour and stuff when I'm making my pie crust though. Okay. Let's make sure that's all incorporated. Good. No big lumps. And then we're going to add the butter. And you can, you can use a fork, you can use a pastry knife, whatever you have. I'll just start working this in. Until you get a nice crumble. Okay. And you see my crumble. And that's about what you want for the topping. Let's get to making the next part, the wet part. So first, 
and, and the order that you do this in matters. So first we're going to add the brown sugar, the baking soda, and the flour. And I'm going to blend the ingredients with a fork. Once again, get rid of the lumps. I have the lumps pretty well out. I just smash them on the side of the bowl here. Then I'm going to add my molasses. beaten egg, and my vanilla. And now I'm going to blend this together really well. You can use a whisk too, I just already had the fork in there, so I make extra dirty dishes. And you can see what this looks like. Now, we're going to add the one cup of boiling water. And the caveat to this is, is you have to add this slow so you don't curdle the egg that's in it. So, while you're continuously whisking, you just stream this in slowly. Like I said, you don't want to curdle egg in it. It'll froth up because of the baking soda in it, which is typical of uh, making the molasses dishes. Ooh, that smells good. Okay, so that's frothed up nice. Incorporated. I don't have scrambled eggs. Time to put her together. So, my homemade pie crust. And yes, I have a video on those. This is an all butter one, because that's what I like. We're just going to pour this in. And then we're going to put our crumb mixture across the top and try and keep this as even as possible. That keeps an even pie because some of this will sink a little bit into the liquid and you don't want to have places where there's no nice wet bottom goo and other places where there's a lot. And she's ready to go in the oven. To save yourself some grease because these bubble and boil and all that jazz and very liquidy. I put it on a foil covered um, cookie tray so that catches any of the spills, drips, boil overs because it'll puff up when it's baking uh, but then it firms as it settles and it cools. So um, this will take about 35 to 40 minutes. It's out of the oven. Now this has to cool down. You need to let this fully cool. So we're ready to cut. 
ready to cut our shoe fly pie. And um, while this isn't all the way up on top like it is in some pies, that's because I'm using a large deep dish pie dish. Your standard 9 inch pie plate that's more shallow, um, this would be even with the top. So, but I always, I tend to always use this. So, anyhow, let's cut her. The crust is nice and flaky. There you go, people. There it is. And I want you to look at how nice that is. See that nice wet bottom, that gooey molasses bottom for the shoe fly? That's what you want. So, and you can see what it looks here. The pie. So you can see it. That is what you want. So you know what comes next. So here you can see it. See the nice shoe fly. Wet shoe fly pie, wet bottom shoe fly pie. Like I said, you can make a dry bottom version, but that sort of defeats the purpose. You don't have near that uh, good molasses taste to it. And that's the whole reason you're doing shoe fly pie. See, here you go. Oh man. Oh my god, that's good. I'm just here to tell you that's just really... Oh my god. That is really good. Mm. I might just have to sit here and eat the whole thing. Mm. So that's my PA Dutch shoe fly pie. Totally synonymous with Amish country and PA Dutch country. Give it a shot. Recipes in the description down below. And uh, make it and enjoy a taste of PA Dutch country.